Hey YouTube, it's Zion Prepper here, and I want to answer one of the most commonly asked questions about the H5N1 virus that I get. And the question is centered around the spreading of the avian flu and how hard would it be for that flu to spread. And, and the first thing you have to understand is that there, there are not, uh, there is not a lot of information that scientists know about how the avian bird flu spreads. Um, but there are pieces that when you look at research that we can put together to give us an idea. Now, I do a lot of research. I'm a scientist. So when I read an article, it's fine and dandy, but I want to go to the source. I want to read what the actual scientist or group has done, look at the data and make sure that it, it, it's valid and I believe it. So that's kind of how I base this information I'm about to present to you. And I present it for informational uh, purposes only. At the end of the day, scientists don't know how this bird flu spreads, even though there are clues, neither do I. So, now remember, for a bird flu pandemic to occur, there has to be so, some things that have to happen. The first thing that has to happen is there has to be interaction between the bird flu virus and the host. You're the host. So, in other words, you have to be able to contract that virus um, so that you, uh, so the bird flu actually infects you. That's the first thing. It also has to include how it enters your body. You know, mouth and, and nose is typically the way it enters the human body. And also, the types of cells in which it can reproduce. So once that virus is in your body, it has to be able to uh, reproduce. It has to proliferate to actually affect your body. And for a pandemic to occur, it also has to be able to escape your body. And it has to escape your body so that it can affect other individuals. And so those are some of the things to consider uh, for a pandemic to occur. Now here's a fact, 600 people have died um, since 1997 from H5N1. 600 people. In the world, that is not a lot of people. In a town, that is not a lot of people. But as I mentioned before, the kill rate is over 50%. So 300 of the 600 people died. That suggests that human-to-human -human transmission is, is rare. But, as we've seen, scientists have recently discovered the mechanism to make H5N1 airborne. And when they did that, they did it in the most simplest fashion possible. So in other words, it's easy to make H5N1 mutate. So if man can do it, Mother Nature surely can do it even easier. So in humans, actually let's talk about uh, in humans, the bird flu virus lives best in the lower lung. And because it lives best in the lower lung, it makes it harder for it to escape. Uh, in, you know, in coughs and sneezes, and that's why you see less human-to-human -human, uh, transmission. But... If it were to mutate, for example, if it were to mutate up such that it was in the upper airways, it would be much easier, much more easy released as an aerosol, uh, which means it can be transmitted easier because it's an aerosol. And number two, if it could change such that it induces coughing, you know that little tickle the back of your throat, it would become airborne uh, and cause a pandemic. Okay, here's the heart of the matter. And when so. This virus needs to mutate, and it probably will, but there are eight genes scientists are concerned about. For H5N1, it only needs to mutate two of the eight. The first one that would mutate, that needs to mutate for it to go airborne and cause a pan pandemic, is that the one that helps viruses invade cells. So, basically, to invade cells, the, the virus needs to latch onto receptors. Okay. You know, let me explain this. Imagine avian bird flu as a puzzle piece. It goes into your body looking for cells, which is another pu puzzle piece. Those two puzzle pieces have to fit perfectly together for that avian bird flu to have an effect on you. And it, for those science nerds out there, actually the humans carry the alpha 2-6 and the birds carry the alpha 2-3. Point being is 2, 6, and 2, 3 are different. That's why birds contract it a lot easier than humans is because of that difference. The second thing that, you know, the, the second, I'm sorry, I said first of all the virus, has, the virus has to invade the cells. The second thing it has to do is be able to replicate or copy itself. So, you know, one virus gets in your body and dies, it's not going to have effect. So a mutation such that it can replicate or copy itself will then cause the pandemic. So why does this all happen or why is this all of concern? Well, in birds, the, the bird flu is actually a gut disease. But in humans, it's primarily a nose, throat, and lung disease. So there's a huge difference. Now, 
how have people contracted the bird flu or how do they get the bird flu? Well, you're working at a chicken farm or, or a bird market, you know, there's feces on the ground, it dries out, you step on it, it turns to powder and you breathe it in, that's one way. You touch a contaminated counter, you drink contaminated water, you can get it human to human. So if somebody has the bird flu, uh, H5N1, and they're exposed to another person or they expose an uh, an in innocent individual to the bird flu for an extended period of time they can get it and you can actually get it uh, I was looking at some of the articles through ingestion and one was in Vietnam a couple guys they ate raw duck blood pudding and captured um, H5N1 so what can we conclude from this to, I'd explain what would need to happen the mutation of the virus to cause a pandemic but other than that scientists have no clue how it would spread and but 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 they are highly concerned that if it becomes airborne, and research shows that it is possible to become airborne, that it will cause a mass pandemic, pandemic, and there is a huge worry. So I know this was a little nerdy, but I'm trying to help people understand who asked me that question, and I apologize if it was too long. Zion Pepper signing out, saying thanks.